the way for the final game in Europe before the quarterfinal playoffs begin next week. Quick bands coming through. Lee Sin Brahm taken away by Gambit. Surprises there, not really. And Copenhagen Wars, well, we've called these ones so far. What are the final ones? Twitch is going to get banned away. Well, so Warlight being the focus. I wonder if they're going to try and steal away Twistana here. So Zig's banned final. Okay, Zig's been banned against Thorn. He played in the last game. He's actually banned from Copenhagen Wars against Gambit. Nick loves to play. We have seen this uh, Siege comp, which actually Gragas. Gambit used against Copenhagen Wars. Should be Gragas. Maokai is still open, however, for the top lane. Ooh. So maybe Gambit just want to trade whatever. That's that's interesting. So they they value Cogmore over the Gragas pick and because the Oriana pick, of course, yeah. or Soren. So very, very strong early picks here from Copenhagen Wolves. You get probably the best top laner at the moment. And then Oriana, the main champion from Soren. The two times you played it, he's been doing really well. Gamut should take Maokai for top lane. Don't have to lock it in now. Can wait. Otherwise, I don't see any reason for not first picking the Gragas. Gragas is the second best champion for Young Buck in that top lane. This is highest KDA 2.50, opposed to the Mundo, who's only got a 1 KDA. And big difference, more importantly, is, of course, for Soren. Played two games on that Ariana so far. It's the champion he's known for in solo queue. He's got a 4.5 KDA, and what was one of the reasons they won the game just two weeks ago? Gami themselves looking to lock up Maokai, assuming that's going to be the top lane pick, and, of course, the Thresh Prince for Edward. And did have a very good uh, game on Thresh earlier. From Edward landed a lot of hooks here, set up many, many kills for Gambit. So uh, strong picks all around. Also because we did see some bans towards the junglers, left both top laners, which Gambit would have gone either Gragas or Maokai, most likely. So they can be happy trading here. And if Kuban gets to his late game point, like we saw when he played Maokai earlier this week, he becomes almost unkillable. Which could also explain the fact that Gambit were fine leaving Gragas. Also because Tristana normally doesn't build Blaze Rune King, so won't have it against the Maokai. We'll see where the Warlight goes, of course, on that Tristana with the Static Shiv early on, like he did in the previous matchup. It's a blessing and a curse sometimes. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. If you can't get the Infinity Edge stacked on top, it causes you all sorts of problems. Of course, it is going to be a Morgana for Unlimited as well. So, final two choices for Nick and Diamond. What will they be? Jungle well, and mid lane. Evelyn, both, not available. Both teams already looking very, very late game. Wouldn't surprise me to see Gambit aim for some late game mid lane as well. Looking for where Nick normally plays. I mean, he did actually play Carthus in one game. Could be an option for him, so you have Marco Diamond game followed him, but on the side of Copenhagen Wolves, because there's a Gragas, he can knock him away. And because of the long range from Tristana, there's actually nobody really collapsing onto Gambit, and therefore the Carvus pick wouldn't be able to do a lot. Sintra would be an interesting pick. We haven't seen Nick playing that one, I don't recall. Of course, very popular over in North America and Korea. And it is going to get Syndra locked in. Kazix also locked in for Diamond. Okay, so Diamond going to do his... Uh, Involve, evolve W, just try and kite and poke as much as possible and jump in if a target does drop low, which is where Syndra comes into the picture. First down target from Cobraning Wolves, Diamond can jump in, jump in, finish it. But on the side of Cobraning Wolves, we have some very, very strong laners. At the moment, top lane should be in their favor, and bottom lane is going to be very hard for Gamma to deal with. Maybe in the early stages they can, while they do have some longer range from Genja. But still, there's some very strong lanes here from Copenhagen Wolves. Cinder, of course, is a great lane bully in the mid lane, but Oriana is one of the best at dealing with her because of also you have your own shield, you can run heal, and therefore survive the burst from a Syndra. Jarvan, being a popular champion for Broken Shard, very much his favorite in the jungle, of course. He definitely is the strongest earlier jungle for him, he believes himself. The words that. Uh, no doubt heard word from his name, uh, his mouth as well. But Jarvan has worked honestly for them. It's generally that yeah. when they do get Jarvan, it seems to be what sets them up. And of course, Broken Shard being the main shot caller for the Wolves, if he can get going, he gets the rest of the team going. And honestly, I think the Wolves have got everything they wanted in that pick and ban phase. I believe so as well. I don't really believe they mind giving over a pick for to Genja as the first pick from. Uh, from Gambit and then get Gragas and Oriana on their side, two of the strongest picks they can get for the solo laners, which normally are the lanes. When we do look at Copenhagen Wolves, who tends to have issues and therefore need some strong laners, 
But we see the same deal. Strong lanes, good early game jungler. Look to get a lead early, get the first dragon, and now make sure to get the second dragon as well, and therefore keep the goal lead. Otherwise, Gambit might get to the point where they can pick it up, get ahead, and then we have seen, once Gambit are ahead, they know how to play it now. A lot of poke, take control, and therefore force Copenhagen was out. Well, we'll see how it works out, ladies and gentlemen. Who do you think has come out ahead in this one after the pick and ban phase? Tweet us, hashtag GMB win or hashtag MIL win for Millennium and Gambit. To Atlanta Sports. And CW course, win. It does say MIL win. Yeah, it should be uh, CW win. Uh, trying, to, trying to throw me off there for the Copenhagen Wolves. Millennium are safe in the playoffs. Don't worry about that, ladies and gentlemen. So, Copenhagen Wolves with... Honestly, I think most of their happy champions. I don't think Gambit have come out too bad either. Of course, Diamond's been playing Kha'Zix three out of four games. Worked out well. I'm interested to see how Syndra works for Nick. Yeah, that's the big one for me. That's, that's a big question mark. It's going to be a lot about Nick in his mid game, where Gambit does have the chance to get the lead, while Vulite still have to scale up on this Tristana, where he has his weak point. So we have to see a great performance from Nick here. Well, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. The final game of Super Week underway. It is the tiebreaker. It is for seventh and eighth place. Who will be facing the bottom of the table at the end of this gambit? You'd have thought, honestly, at the start of the summer, it would be unheard of for them to be down there alongside the Copenhagen Wolves, who themselves, of course, went through the promotion series last split. It's going to be very risky for Gambit, though, in these team fights. Because only Diamond can actually jump out of Jarvan's ulti. And you also have Orianna. So now Broken Jar can get the ball from Soren, jump in, and if there's no flash on Genji or Nick, they can instantly blow them up here in these fights. So the engage is definitely in favor of Cobalting and Wolves in that case, where Gambit has to rely on Kuban going in, snaring a target, and then they just come in with the stun from Nick and the burst. Otherwise, they're just going to have to try and sit back and poke, which is what they like to do. But both teams, with some good late game comps here, will still, because Copenhagen Wolves just have the Javan and Orianna combo here, say they, they are the ones who can dictate the game. We see the Doran Shield coming out from Edward once again, so we'll see whether he's going to be a bit more aggressive in the early lane phases down that bottom half. Of course, it looks like... The Wolves may well be changing things up here. I yeah. really fancy taking the top lane pair. And you see Unlimited heading up there. Minions you already spawned. see Warlight going across the top lane as well. So the Wolves are lane swapping. And it is the issue when you start Dawn Shield on a support. It's good to get the instant combat stats if you are in a 2 versus 2 lane. But when, once the lane swap hits, you lose out on a lot of gold. And it's kind of a dead weight item you all of a sudden have on you here. So uh, not paying off for Edward, starting with the Dawn Shield. Well, the Wolves pass on by a ward. Gambit know exactly where they are. And they also know that the lane swap is on, which is why we see Edward already moving in, getting securing the blue buff over there. It's going to be a delayed blue buff, that's for sure, for Gambit. The Wolves in position much earlier on. Young Mug sticking around, making sure he doesn't steal the experience from Broken Shard there, so he will hit level two first. Or well, Young Mug, meanwhile, moves around to the Wolves. So, body system very much in effect. Kubon also doing similar alongside Diamond down in the lower half. So, we'll see how this works out. Gambit put a lot of focus on that Dragon. Copenhagen Wolves have made some indecisive moves on the Dragon. With the lane swaps, it always becomes a problem. Yeah, so Copenhagen Wolves have to send down Unlimited around the Dragon. Pretty much already now, well. if they wanted to stop Gambit from doing it. But because Gambit knew Copenhagen Wolves started their blue buff and can still see Unlimited up in his top lane or just saw him move before, and they feel confident enough to start it, but they still have to uh, dance around it. And not take like too much damage. Kubon already dropping that low. Yeah, they're not juggling it at the best, honestly. It's no. a little bit of an awkward angle. It's not working out too well, this juggle. Nonetheless, it will go down. You can see it's almost finished off there. So they're not able to quite dodge all of the damage. It's going to be Kubon's going to take a couple of hits. Ed, Ooh. he's taken very low. It's going to get finished off right now. So Gambit take first Dragon of the game. 3 minutes 14. But still, this is why some teams feel it's too risky to take the early Dragon. Because if Copenhagen Wolves have been there just with two members, mm. And Gambit was so low. It would have been two easy kills, maybe even the Dragon. So it was a bit of a risky move here, but they felt confident enough doing it because they expected Copenhagen Wolves to stay on the top side of the map. And a bit of an issue or a bit of a mistake from the Wolves. They didn't actually send down Unlimited beforehand with Broken Shot and Youngbok. 
to make sure this dragon didn't get started. And now they're going to check and see. Oh, it's gone. Limited's might land the dart binding. No, not going to quite land. Instead, a tower hit will go down. And Limited suddenly gets unleashed damage on him from Nick. Forces the flash away. Ignite was used by Nick. Thought he could get the kill there. But good, good reactions. Oh, broken shot around uh -oh. his mid lane. Still got flash available, remember. Didn't use it last time around. This time he is going to get caught out. Will he flash? Yes, he will. Gets away safe. And we'll see whether Broken Shard decides to pay a second visit there in a moment. So Nick actually decided to take all the damage because he wanted to delay his flash, even though he knew he had to use it after. Should have just instant flash. As soon as he saw the flag, you flash away. Don't take the damage, just stay in the lane as healthy as possible. And let's see here. Broken Shard want to get down and help Young Bog mm. in his bottom side. Genji just been happy farming. Same goes for Woolad in the top side. Yeah, and it looks like Kubon's not actually going to go towards that top lane just yet. He's happy to stick away. Of course, Wallite freezing that lane up, so wouldn't really be able to get a great deal from that one, Kubon. So instead, he's going to stick around, put his system. It's going to delay Diamond's farm for a while because, well, Jungbook was off in his own down the bottom. Now he's also joined Broken Shard. So both of these top lane junglers using the body system and going around that jungle as a parry. Notice Wallite here. He only has one rank in his queue at the moment. Didn't level up anything else at this point. Just saving it because he doesn't need it. He's just standing here freezing the lane and farming it. So once we go back to standard lanes... I mean, it's, it, he obviously doesn't want the explosive shot. Yeah, of course. So he can course. keep this lane frozen. Yeah. It's actually pretty smart because he doesn't need anything other than just his auto attacks at this point. And therefore just sitting and waiting to see what's going to happen. Brungsha back to farming, but it seems... With a pretty good gang in the mid lane, got a lot of damage onto Nick. You can notice how he used both health potions now because he didn't flash instantly. And had two members over in his top side to push it. Well, instead, they're going to try and shove it, reset the wave into the tower. Brawlite doesn't have leveled up yet. We'll see now whether he, he has. Now he has. Explosive shot goes onto Diamond. And he is still trying to hold that lane. Look at it. He's pulled it completely away from the tower. Nicely done, Wallite. But now he does have the explosive shots. Going to be a lot harder to actually freeze it. And we might see Copenhagen and Wolves either swap their lanes around and try and get the dual lane down to this bottom side, at least around the time where the next dragon will spawn, so they don't have to give it up as well to Gambit. They have not been doing any kind of pushing in this top side, but now he will be actually forced to push it down, so therefore Kubon can return to this top lane alone and just wait for the wave to come down. Oh, oh scumbag. Interrupted, broken shot. Backing off himself, puts the Demacia standard down. Soren may also do the same again to Nick. He should be able to back off and get himself the Chalice. But it's a great play. On Soren, though. He is continuing his farm in that mid lane, of course, on his most favored champion. So pressure always going to be on Nick on that Syndra. Youngbuck, he's gone quite far up the lane there, trying to get close to get some of that experience, not working out for him. Has got a bit of a CS lead over Kubon, who has now returned also to this top lane. He should be able to farm this one out now that it's, of course, reset onto his tower. That will give him his experience and much needed gold. Yeah, it seems like Copenhagen Wolves just want to swap it around now, send Youngbok back to this top lane and send Unlimited and Wula to this bottom side where Genji is level 5 and currently sitting and just farming the waves here, waiting now for Cobra Wolves to make the move. He did already go back, picked up a Phage, nowhere on Sheen, so not looking to uh, do the small instant trade on Kog'Maw you can do and just boom, one hit and you... like, away. So let's see here. Very standard. We're actually just waiting for the next dragon. None of the junglers have been very active lately. It's a Phage versus a BF sword down that bottom lane right now. In terms of AD carries, we'll see whether Warlight decides to go aggressive, of course. Extra hit points are required for Genja. Death Santa's land, he goes in. Eddie in there. Black Shield is going to be Genja's used already. Six. Genja's going to put the damage down. Just hit level 6, forces him away. Nice play from Gambit. A very nice setup here. And Edward on Thresh, he did the same thing earlier today, where he just landed the hooks, set up a lot of kills here, and forced Wulai back. He just came down to the lane. And Flame. Unlimited. He's got Death Sentence to... Ooh, missed it badly. Oh, Unlimited take it low. Oh, oh one more. One more hit would have been enough. Instead, didn't use it. Nonetheless, that's going to force the wave on towards the tower, and they could get a good chunk of damage. Wulai is making his way back down here, but there's a lot of CS he's going to miss out on. If the cannon minion actually dies here before he comes down, he will lose out on also the melee minions. Yes, now he's coming down here. Lost a lot of CS from this. A lot of gold. Potential gold. Oh, oh. that's not going to land. 
Black Shield this time did go down in time. Instead, he went on towards the minion Genja. Forces and back again. Tries to trade with Walleye. Got to be careful. He has got that BF Sword after all. He did, will put some damage out there. Didn't go with the Static Shear first item this time around, though. And we just see both teams here playing it very safe in the start. It's all about just, okay, can we land the skill shot, try and poke down? Genja didn't even want to try and force the flash away from Cobalt and Wolves. As soon as they jumped away or just moved away from Genja, he stopped. Didn't want to try and force anything. Didn't want to take any chance. If the jungler had been there from Cobalt and Wolves, could have backfired for him. So just playing it safe though. Oh, Edward. Well, like, was Black Shield on towards him this time around. Could have gone with the flay to start with. Was close enough. Bit to land. Oh, Dark Binding lands. Genshin now gonna take some damage. Trouble. Will I in trouble though? Flay available. Death centers. Will he get thrown out? No. Will stop. Diamond was nearby. Has hit level six. Guessing he's evolved his void spikes like he has been doing throughout the uh, entire split so far. Eddie, death centers this time was thrown to unlimited black shield and guessed right but they keep forcing wool light away from these minions here so it's actually working out for them dragon is also alive and then once again will i take a lot of damage here genja however is down to 50 percent because of all the trading but dragon is live both top laners just have teleport and at the moment nobody is making a move Diamond's going to get spotted out by that ward the broker shot just placed. So bottom line, know that they are safe for now. Eddie burning down with that uh, rocket. Explosive shot on him. Oh, hello. Youngbook going aggressive on towards Kubon, who uses his ultimate to make sure he's safe. Pretty quick cooldown on that skill. But we'll be down for a while. Let's see whether they're trying to create a play from this one. Gambit continue pushing forward. This pressure in this bottom lane is starting to create a big problem for Walleye in terms of CS. You can see he's falling further and further behind. Diamond, he's been spotted by a ward, but it does call to action Broken Shard, who was, has just backed to base, in fact. So Ooh. if Edward was to catch anything on Walleye, he would go down. And they are just going to try and force Copenhagen Wolves to move away from this tower again and lose even more CS. Diamond is poking on here. Might take some damage, but still the whole idea is to force Woolite away from these minions here so he won't be able to kill them. Yeah, Woolite desperately getting closer again. Void Spikes not landing this time. Caught on towards him. There's the ultimate. One more shot to do it. He didn't go pull the trigger. Genja. He had the W available. Didn't use it. Playing it very, very safe. Didn't use the ult either to once again either force a summoner or at least Woolite to jump away. Okay. So Gambit, it's actually a very smart move because they did force Wula back to base, can now go towards the Dragon. And two it's members of opening walls are here too. A shockwave in an enclosed environment like this Dragon Pit is always risky. Nick, we have to stun down. Unlimited, gonna get caught out. There's the ultimate used. That's Unlimited down, but that's not great. Eddie's very low. Youngwood comes in. He's gonna try and catch on. Youngwood, Kubon dances, catch on towards him. This dragon's still not gone down. Will get smited down, but Diamond pays the price. Youngwood's gonna get picked off on the side now. Kubon goes in, locks up Broken Shot. The rest of Gamut reacting. Wallite comes around the side. They need to shut Youngwood down. Wallite's gonna count towards him. Genji's in trouble, gets in towards the push. Nick lands the stun, but it's not on the right target. Eddie throws oh, out the lantern. lantern. Genji gets away safe and Gambit back away a two for two trade and the dragon for Gambit the question is will they get this bottom turret uh, at least pushing in here on limited coming from the base everyone else from Gambit needs to go back to base and he has should be a tower for Copenhagen Wolves so two for two first one for Nick I have to remember once again it's Gambit they want to set up these fights here they had some very nice poke very nice foreplay we could even say before they started the dragon but in Copenhagen Wolves, they are still a team who constantly wants to contest fights, or contest oh, dragons. Oh. They want to fight, and that's why they stayed, even though Wula wasn't there. Eddie sticking around just to milk out that experience from range. Almost got out of position by Unlimited. Genja back in that bottom lane. He's going to wipe out that wave. CS wise, Wula, of course, gained a chunk back, but Genja will regain that power. Nick getting himself the blue wolf. Athene's now completed. Trinity Force picked up by Genja. Infinity Edge yet to be taken by Wallite, may be close to getting the VAT money for it. Actually a little bit short at the moment, still only on 600 gold, so he's got a little way to go on that one. So, once this blue buff's traded across the Sauron, how do we count this one? Because the game is going to start opening up now, those towers are starting to fall. So up in his top lane at least, there's a big difference in how strong they are at this point, especially Youngbuck, because he went triple thorns, so he's delaying his Rod of Ages, has been Pressuring out Kuban, making sure he could always push it down, get all the farm here. Doesn't really do a lot of damage onto Kuban, he's very tanky and will get the Rod of Ages first. So, scaling into late game, Kuban definitely has the advantage. 
Also the fact he's going to get Rod of Ages earlier than Yongbok. And you saw in that fight, of course, the presence that Kubon does have. Nick still very far behind in Depending team. out against four members of Copenhagen Wolves in this mid lane. Stun being used, just poking down Soren. Wait, will get cleared out. Genja down the bottom, continue to farm. That's going to put pressure in towards this mid lane. Diamond's voice box are only going to do so much as Nick continues to try and wipe the wave. Soren hooked in. Tower hit will land. Good shield comes out. Defensive ball and black shield being used to save him. While this is all happening, remember, Genja is getting all of that free experience, all of that free farm down this bottom lane. Wallite will have to go down and deal with him. And he already has their Trinity Force completed, so very, very strong points from Genja now. We have seen him build in Vintage as his second item of Blade of Rune King could also be an option for him. Still, he's going to look to, towards some defensive items. Maybe a Garden Ooh. Angel fairly early on after his second damage item, item like we have seen before. Genja forces Wallite out of the river, makes him sure he has to use that rocket jump and go around towards his tower. Diamond will get spotted out, that ward giving vision to the Copenhagen Wall. So this tower will fall out. I don't think Wallite can hold on to this one. Genja simply waiting, letting the minions get taken down. Nick Flash instantly Whoa. this time around. That's what he needed to do. Got away quickly from Broken Shard. Sadly, Soren couldn't actually join in here because he got stunned by Nick. Soon as Broken Shard appeared, the stun landed onto Soren. He couldn't shockwave, even though Nick was actually knocked up here. Once again, they forced the flash and can now look to do the exact same thing. Ulti is still ready for Broken Shard. Uh -oh. Let's go straight for Nick. Oh, Death Sentence is not going to be sidestepped, but he could get the flay. No. Rocket jump used, gets out of there. Eddie pressuring Wallite, who has fallen quite considerably far behind on Genja right now. Suddenly, you know, at the right time, Genja's found himself an AD carry that works. Yeah, well, he's not playing Caitlyn. Works for once. <laughs> and he's been looking very good in Super Week. So I'm playing Corgi as well. His Tristana was a bit too manly, but uh, didn't actually have a bad game on it. So he's been looking good on any other champion than Caitlyn here in the LCS. And let's see, Broken Shot once again around his mid lane. We just talked about how there's no flash on Nick. There's ulti for Broken Shot and Shockwave from Soren. So Nick is dead if he's caught in the middle of the lane. Well, it's pushing out this bottom. Got the support of Unlimited nearby. Genja continues to take away the golems, shove the wave back, defend it in that inner and continue the pressure. Gambit with the advantage right now. Just 90 seconds until that dragon comes back up. Broken Shot's going to go back off. Rod of the Ages completed by both top laners. Along with his mid laners now, Source Boots and Athenes. We'll see which way either of those deviate. Right now, they are staying very much standard builds. Nick's clearing out these waves, no problem, as he starts to catch in terms of CS. Yeah, well, the good thing for Soren is he can always clear the wave, go up to his own, into his own jungle, take a Wraith camp, take the Wolf camp, as long as Broke Shot isn't there, and just keep picking up some extra farm. Nick has been trying to do the same thing in here, so we haven't actually seen too much trading between the two mid laners. And we just saw Kobolang was either send Broken Shot in, or four members to pressure the tower once Kenji was freezing the bot lane. Now they're just uh, kind of playing the same game. Keep the other carries in the bot lane, keep the top lane. Top lane is up in the top side. And then everyone else is around this mid lane here, waiting again for Dragon. About 20 seconds, not a lot of wards Ooh, hello. yet. Well, it's going to have to run from this one. It's going to jump away. Oh! Lands with it, nicely done. The ultimate available, exhaust goes down. Genja catches on towards him. He takes Gambit. the lantern, and Genja gets in. The dragon spawns right now, and they're going to move straight for it. Oh, that was such a nice setup here by Hit, but he was actually shot away by Woolite, but still just connected the hook, went for it, picked up a kill, picked up a Baron, and even putting a pressure onto this top tower. It looks great. Oh, let's just see it. And shoot him away. It's already in the air. Oh, that is beautiful. Flying Edward. Flying Who'd have thought? Boss Eddie. Dragon picked up by Gambit. Wallite will go down. That's the replay of that one. They've already picked it up. The question is, can they take some kills? They've left, of course, uh, the top lane free for Kubon, who is pushing that one in. Myungbuk had joined them to try and interrupt that dragon. And that's a tower and a dragon picked up off that one kill. Gambit hmm. step into the lead now with a four and a half thousand gold advantage. But I'm not sure why Copenhagen was actually sent Youngbok down to the mid lane. He did have teleport. Already lost the 80 carry, so dragon was most likely gone. Instead of staying in his top lane, defend his own tower. So now they gave up a tower here. Broke shot though. 
Might look for a fight. Oh, flashes Flash from the Shockwave. Now the stun comes in. Broken Shot takes some damage. The Black Shield mitigating some of it, but he was taken very low. That was the ultimate burn from Nick. So two towers for Gambit. But the last few dragons are now putting pressure on this mid lane. Talk about all the poke they have, especially also with Diamond maxing his W. You and involving it. Oh, oh what I did! Stunned hooked. In goes Eddie. Genja strikes. And now Edward, he's even going to save this one. He will live. The tower needs to be focused, guys. That's what you need to be looking towards now. Genja's putting the damage down on towards that one. Minion wave has been cleared out. Nick will tank the last hit. But Gambit, they're stepping it up as they have done all super weak. And Youngbuck is in trouble now in the top wave with Kubon using that ultimate to save out the tower once again. Diamond sneaks in. He steals away the blue buff. Everything is slipping away from the Copenhagen Walls here. And all of a sudden here now, if Broken Shadow wants to engage, because Copenhagen Wolves is falling so far behind, he's just going to die instantly, and they can't really use this Orianna to Jarvan combo. And now, look how confident Genja, this Genja thing is. Genja has been, it's a different man. Look at his kills. Super weak. He's managing to take down the tower, and everybody dancing around, taking the aggro from it. And it's another tower down. All out is now down for Gambit, as they keep the pressure onto Gambit, uh, to Copenhagen Wolves. So last dragon, Copenhagen was lost it due to Wulight being caught by Edward. Now they lost the mid tower as well. Exact same deal. Edward on to uh, Wulight, kill him, take the tower. Now Yumbuck getting to the point where the top laners can't really kill each other because of the Rod of Ages, and none of them is actually designed to kill a tank or a tree or a fat man. Depends. Let's see. Broke shot is up in this top lane. Edward started to roam around. Already landed a few very nice hooks. Kubon. Tries to draw him in, takes the minion wave. Youngbuck's like, no, 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 don't like that, <laughs> don't like that. Backing out, doesn't fancy it. Spider Sense is working. Diamond was also waiting to pounce across. Has leveled up, evolved his wings as level 11. Of course, he would have jumped in there. It's going to be a safe clean up for Kubon. Eddie is farming out, getting the experience on the, on the sleep while this is all happening. It's giving Genja some free farm as well, who is now way ahead in terms of Wolo. And we'll go for his Infintage, second item, and possibly Garden Angel as the next one, which he likes to do. But we have to see. That's a big advantage, two and a half thousand gold ready. Again, it's Genji. dragons, Genji. towers, all the kills as well. It seems every single time Gambit puts a lot of focus on the bot lane, especially from Diamond. They do get some kills on Genja, and it works for them because they use it into Take Dragon to get the goal lead. Last game against Copenhagen of Wolves. Tuesday, first day of Super Week. Same deal. A lot of focus on getting Genja and Edward ahead. A lot of focus on getting Dragons. And Copenhagen Wolves fell too far behind, could never engage onto Gambit, and ended up losing the game. And at the moment, it's looking like pretty much the same deal. If only we'd have seen this Gambit showing their faces earlier on, in the summer, they may not have been in this situation in the first place. As it is, though, they are looking strong. And honestly, any challenger team watching this one may need to be a little bit fearful of getting Gambit as your team to face. Diamond continuing on this Kha'Zix. Always still building, a lot of damage. That's what he's worked so far. Manages to shove those waves up. But more importantly for me, Nick on Syndra. We haven't seen him on it, I don't believe, but as far as I'm Maybe aware. Maybe once. I don't recall seeing it before anyway myself. Obviously, he was nearly a lot before the changes on that. But it's a champion that's worked for him. 102, keeping up farm well with Soren, who's on his favorite champion in that mid lane. And he is building very well and using those stunts to great effect. So both mid laners doing a good job in the game. Soren has been farming the jungle, his own lane. Will that almost caught out once again by Edward? But it's just Gambit at the moment in control now. Can wait for next dragon, do the exact same they've been doing before. Try and look for one pick on to, to Cobra and Wolves, kill him, go back to, to dragon. And the Wolves, because they are behind, it becomes so hard for them to engage the fights because they need to make sure they have the number advantage or they catch someone from Gambit out of position as soon as the fight starts and just blow them up with the Orianna Shockwave. Otherwise, Gambit will be able to just re-engage and win it because they are stronger at the point. Oh, Genja's even taken away the race. Literally nothing being given to Broker Child oh. unless you use Smite and steal away the uh, big race. So he got that gold nonetheless. So, top laners. While well, it's a gold advantage for Youngbuck in terms of CS, Coupon is actually the one starting to apply some pressure. Of course, both of those very big tanks. But 
Copenhagen Wars right now, they dare not go near their own jungle. You can see the timer on the Dragon up, 12 seconds. Youngboat's backing off to base. He's not going to be there in time. Oh, well, that might be in. Well, that's in trouble. Kumon comes around. Oh, not quite close enough. Of course, that twisted advance short at range these days, so he wasn't able to jump on him quite so quick. Before that rocket jump, and instead Broken Child gets focused. Not a lot of damage, though, from Nick. No, but still, Ava took a lot of damage from Soren here. Oh, the hook connects. Oh, Death Sentence goes in there. Now Broken Child's in trouble. Oh, that's a this time, Nick does have the damage. Powers him down. Soren gets stunned out as well. Genja running interference. They need to sweep out that ward. They're not going to go for it. They're worried about their middle to lane turret instead. Soren pulls Shockwave. Only catches on Diamond. Lands and gets thrown out there. Oh, He's going to catch on. Big what are you in trouble? Big Boss Eddie pulling the moves out. Nick gets himself a third kill of the game. Every single assist here from Eddie has just been such a nice setup. First onto Broken Shot, now onto Woolite. Again, Dragon for Gambit, set up by Edward. He lands the hook here. They get a kill, get another objective, even more gold. And Copenhagen Wolves, they tried to look for a fight. Didn't have the wards, didn't have the control around the river to actually spot out Gambit. And instead, Big Boss Eddie is coming for you. Four out of four, Dragons, blue buff going, Diamond picks that up, Genja around the side there as they put the pressure on towards the inner turret down the bottom, and actually, that is nearly gone. Genja's burned that turret right down. They fancy it, he's taking it. That's four out of four. And we just have to say, in this Super Week, Gambit has clearly looked like a stronger team. Copenhagen Wolves have had a lot of issues. They did win a game against Rocket, where they played really well. Otherwise, it didn't actually work for them. Gambit, on the other hand, same tactic, same strategy as every single game they played in Super Week. Focus on getting Genji ahead in the bot lane, and then just full focus on Dragon. Every time Dragon spawns, they set up a lot of good wards, spot out whatever team they're playing against, get a kill, get the Dragon, and it's just been the tactic. We're just gonna see it again. Soren, he actually wants to get Genji here, only gets Diamond, and then... Oh, it would. Whoop, too late. <laughs> Not gonna get away. Hook me there. And Eddie strikes again. Fantastic. Well, he was known as the Thresh Prince way back when he, was. when he first came onto the scene. And it seems that Edward has been working that champion back into his champion pool. And it's working wonders for him. Will I? He's going to have nightmares of Eddie. <laughs> I wouldn't like to play against him, that's for sure. Right now, he definitely seems to be stepping his form up. The question is, can they keep this up? Of course, promotion series is some way away right now. Oh, Diamond hops out the way from that dark binding. They've got to see who they're going to play. Well, of course, they've had the whole Super Week to sit and prepare for this one. They didn't go back to Russia the or minion. their homelands or wherever that may well be. Instead, they stuck around here in Cologne in the studios and practiced hard. Can they do that again? That's the question. The fabled boot camp of Gambit, of course, used to be a big thing. But as of late, it has caused more problems than it created. Yeah, but still, the more time they get to play with Kuganov in his top lane and also find their playstyle, oh, which they seem to have done. Death Sentence again on Broken Shard this time. The rest of the team were not there to react. Broken Shard going aggressive on oh. Eddie. Doesn't land it this time around, but Nick's nearby. Could throw out the stun. Wall are you going to pounce away from this one? Diamond does pounce through. The rest of Gambit pushing up the midline. Copenhagen Wolves out of position here, remember? There's no in a turret off just off of the side instead they're gonna come jumping in broken shot pounces catches on towards genja the belly slam ironically knocking him out of that one the lands are not pulling nick to safety nick will go down genja gets a kill on towards broken shot kubon very low on health and gamut this time are in the retreat oh, oh, oh. another hook goes in unlimited low soren low can genja get on towards them ultimate goes out oh, no. unlimited taken so low genja gets the speed on towards it one eye pounces shockwave pulls genja in towards the tower he will go down a lot and no, Gaykathian surprise flashed away from will not get Soren down. And wow, Copenhagen Wars finally coming out in the advantage one to two. But that was a very, very nice engage by Broken Shot. However, there was no shockwave. I don't believe Soren was actually in range to use it, even though both Nick and Genja were it. caught. Used on Genja. Used it in the very end, of yeah. course. I mean, as soon as the engage came, just once we get the replay, we can actually check what happened with Soren here. But still, Copenhagen Wolves. Showing they're not done yet. And Gambit just chasing for the very, very last kills and end up being caught. So let's see. Brojack goes in for the engage. Soren is actually way too far away. He doesn't he's not in range to use the shockwave here. So Nick and Genji, even though they were caught, the two squishy members, Copenhagen Wolves didn't manage to just blow them up here. End up trading one for one in the start. And now it's all about Genji looking for more kills. Who goes unlimited? He gets very low now, he has to flash away. 
And Genji just want to land two of his ulties to kill him. And in the very end, it's a good shockwave by Soren to actually kill Genji. So mid turret went down. The walls managed to sneak in and get that one. Now Gambit back in full force. So Copenhagen walls retreating back to safety of their turrets. Gambit, got to be careful. Warning signs there. Infinity Edge and Static Shift now completed for Wallite. So we'll be able to do range damage. Let's start to put the pressure on. And as we've seen so, so many times with Oriana, a good shockwave on the right target can be crucial. They're trying to bait Gendry into coming closer there instead. Soren will get that golem down. Especially because Gambit is running this two damage uh, threat where they only have Genji and Nick as the damage dealers. Kubon is going to be very tanky now. Yomok want to look for a fight here. Yeah, teleported in. He's going to go towards them. Shockwave is back up. Instead, Lantern's going to get thrown out. Stun does not land on Yomok. Dragon up in over Let's a minute. Down. Oh, the walls, I'm not sure if they're missing the timing on that one or whether they just wanted to create an opportunity early on. Death Sentence misses. Stun misses. The walls force them back. But his next dragon fight here, there's no flash on Genja. He's going to be the target for Broken Shard, so as long as they can actually combine it with the Shockwave, they might be able to kill him and therefore win the fight. Because again, as I just said before, Gambit is only running Genja as Nick and Nick as the two damage dealers. Diamond, he evolves his W. So another full focus on single target damage, more poke, long fights. And of course, Kuban in the top lane of Maokai is not exactly going to kill people by himself in the late game. He can still do some damage but not exactly the same amount as a Gragas, who's building a lot of AP. Well, we are absolutely going to see the Dragon fight. Will it be the right decision for the Wolves? They've got to be questioning this one. Void Staff was completed by Nick in the last back. He's got a power advantage over Soren, but if Gambit were to get caught in his pit by that Shockwave, it could be critical. Gambit waiting off at the side. The Copenhagen Wolves waiting. Dragon up in four seconds time will spawn now. Will they go for it, or will they try and pressure instead the middle turret? I wonder what Gambit choose. They put a lot of value in this dragon. They want to stick around. They want to go for it. Kubon may well be the opening trigger. He goes in. Stun doesn't really do a great deal from Nick this time around. Copenhagen Wars trying to draw advantage. Space. Again, skill shots hitting left and right. None of them quite connected. Diamond's taken pretty low. He gets the smite in. Gambit are going to get out. And Copenhagen was on the wrong side here. Gambit can move straight up to the mid lane, push it into the tower, get a few hits, play some water here and actually spot the Wolves. Oh, they might just try and bait them out here. Let's see, Copenhagen Wolves Kuban should be looking for a fight. Kuban out of position, he's 5v1 in, he's going to take a lot. There's another Lancer now, instead he decides to go aggressive. Not sure it's the right choice. Youngbuk can get the explosive cast down on the right target. Diamond taken low. Eddie almost dropped straight away by Youngbuk. He's fleeing from this one. Youngbuk should right. be able to shut him down. Stun comes out. Eddie gets the flay down. It's not going to be enough to save his life. Diamond now going to get caught out. He gets slow. Nick off the side there. He will take down Unlimited, but now he's being pursued. The quick pancake no towards him. Broken shot jumping in. Doesn't matter. Chunkway comes in. That's going to be the walls. They can turn straight for Baron. Going straight for Baron again. He is alive and Diamond with smite ready. He's still very, very low. Let's see if they can actually steal it. Broken Shot needs to be careful as well. Genja's still alive, remember, they're in an enclosed space, and that's a long range AD carry to do some damage on you. Will I get focus? Look at that! Just two shots, takes him so, so low. Yungu catches on towards him, they have to turn back on towards him. Genja now pulled him out of it. Soren taking so, so low. Defensive ball. Oh, oh is no. it going to be enough? No, Most bikes don't land on it. Diamond coming in. Come on, here. here comes Kubon, back around the side there. Genja, what target will he focus on? They have to pick this one right. They have to play this right. Kubon, Yungu gets jumped on. Diamond finds him, gets the reset, comes around. Broken shot, chase down. Voice bikes land. Double kill for Diamond. And Gambit engage on the Baron. So now Gambit's turn here. Four members of Copenhagen will start at the Baron. They were already very low here. And it was all about Genja and Diamond. Beautiful play by Genja, especially. Back and forth, he kept hitting every single member. Now it's Woolite turn to do the same. Uh, he's going to see if he can get the poke down. Smite, of course, is available for Diamond. Broken Shard not up there. This is going to be a tough steal. Woolite is going to be the one that tries to get it. One more shot. Oh, so, so close. But the Smite is there. Diamond secures it for Gambit. All right, so Gambit with the Baron here, but still warning signs. The last team fight definitely in favor of Copenhagen Wolves because Gambit, four members were caught on one side of the wall and then Kuban was all alone. He didn't take the Lantern, ended up dying and Copenhagen Wolves could just chase Gambit, kill them, start the Baron, and it was honestly fantastic play by Genja. Dodging around all the damage from Copenhagen Wolves, and he just kept switching between the targets. Everyone dropped low. Let's see it again. Diamond is really low. He's all about poking here, and Genja as well, full HP. 
so much damage from Baron onto Copenhagen Wolves, they can't really take it, and now it's all about Genji dancing around. Survives first, dodges, hit Broken Shot, now it's onto Sauron, moves on here, and now Diamond can jump in, misses the first one. Nice little dodge by Copenhagen Wolves, and then Kuban from behind, and just chasing off, getting two kills, and also the Baron. Yep, I reckon Kuban must have had a uh, quadra kill in his mind there. I'm like, get in there, my ulti running, just pop it. Might get all four. <laughs> it didn't work out for him nonetheless. And now Gambit with the Baron buff. Can they push up? They've already taken one in a turret down in the bottom lane. Can they rotate and take this one down? Pull straight up there. Kubon's not with them. So they're only four members. And they have got a big, big wave doing the pushing for them down in the lower half of the map. Genja. What a destructive machine he is right now on Cogmore. It's a champion that seems to be working for him. Infinity Edge, Trinity Force is a big, big oh, build. Oh. He's going to be the focus. Lantern nice is there, though. Broken Shard tried something, but that's risky. Risky, risky maneuver doing that in open play against the Baron Up team. Yeah, and there was Flash for Genji, but didn't have to use it because of the Lantern here. So Cobaning Wolves tried to force it. Didn't work, and now... Back to the same deal. Oh, look at this, though. We're going to have Woolite's going to go in the top. He's going to show himself. There's a it's mini wave mid coming in. Mid tower is absolutely going to be in trouble. Kubon's wave is going to get cleared out. He's not going to get close there, but the mid tower is the focus now. Gambit will move in towards that one. They should be able to get the damage down. Genja working it down. You can see, of course, no ultimate available for Broken Shard. He just used it, and that's the tower down. Easy tower here because Kobane was also splitting up, not using again the Gragas to wave clear, not use, using the Tristana to wave clear. So it's all about Soren and he can't do it alone. And Gambit. Oh, in the jungle here. Well, we've Edward saw, didn't want to hook. Of course, Jez is yesterday catching that beautiful three man Orianna ultimate in the jungle. This time around, Soren wasn't able to catch them unawares in the bush. Gambit looking to take the final inner turret. Minion wave on the bottom while it was cleared slightly by Young Buck is going to continue pushing, I think, for Gambit. Now Gambit themselves will keep the pressure on this top wave. All they need to do is just buy a couple of time. Genji can just walk up, get some long range hits on that tower, and it will be taken very low. He's got to be careful, though. Explosive cask is up for Young Buck. If he wants to slam Flash, get in there, blow Genji in towards them, he will go down, and that big damage dealer. Once he's down, will cause a problem for Copenhagen Wars. Look at all the poke from Gambit. Diamond is actually standing down here. Oh, just jumping away. But he kept just running up, trying to hit Copenhagen Wars from the side. But Genji did the same. Oh, a lot of damage to Nick. Dark finding landing. Nick goes got down. Get straight in towards it. Broken shot, though. He drops straight away. Diamond getting the reaction on that one. He's going to pounce. He gets reset on towards Soren. Soren, no. He will drop. And Limited's going on towards that. The Soul Shackles will proc, but not doing enough. And Genji gets himself the kill. It's a three for one trade for Gambit. And they can keep on pushing. So while Nick died very fast, as soon as Bongshot jumped in, it's the thing about Jarvan. If you are behind and you jump in, you are gonna die every single time. Gambit easily kill him and then just chase on, going for inhibitor. Inhibitor turret will go down here. Baron buff still on them. It's about to wear off. It's got about 10 seconds remaining as they keep on pushing. Wallet backing away from this one. Inhibitor gets worked on. Genji will follow that one. The question is, will Gambit finish? They used to be able to finish games in a matter of a minute. The first inhibitor going down. It doesn't look like they're gonna be able to do it this time around, but so far, they are looking good to take seven. And Dragon is alive again. Gonna be number six for Gambit here. Not a single one for Cobra. Like Wolves Baron for Gambit as well. All the towers. There's so much global gold for Gambit in this game. And it all started just from the start with the very first Dragon for Gambit into lane swap. Cobra like Wolves didn't want to send down Unlimited or didn't actually have time to do it because Gambit did the Dragon so fast. Took a lot of damage for it, but that's the very first one. And from there on, it was all about Edward catching Woolite, getting the next Dragon for Gambit. And then he caught a broken shot. Next dragon again for for Gambit and so on, so on. In the end, they just got too far ahead. And while we did see some good engages from Copenhagen Wolves, because they are so far behind, it's just not enough. And Gambit can always, even when they make a mistake, come back. Well, I just wonder if Gambit were to get the choice. Wolves when they get that seventh place. Let's not forget there is a fifth. Uh, sixth place slot available. Exactly. Of course, the loser of the two quarterfinals will be in that. They're also going to slide in towards that promotion slot. That will be the number one promotion slot. They'll have the first choice. But I just wonder if Gambit do get seven. I wonder if they're going to pick NIP. Well, if you look at yesterday's games mm -hmm. between NIP and SK Prime, clearly SK Prime were the better team. So it would be NIP at the moment you would choose if you had an had a choice. Or H2K. Or H2K, Looking maybe sure, in this array. but they might as well also be uh, the team which uh, whoever gets number six will pick. But we actually have to see the Challenger Finals also next week, after the quarterfinals of uh, LCS. We're going to have the Challenger Finals where 
we're of course going to see who is the strongest team, who do you want to avoid, and uh, who can you pick. Yeah, that's all going to be happening right here as well. Let's not forget, along with those quarterfinals. A lot of matches still to play as the playoffs now are upon us. This final, final game of the season. Diamond's going to come around the side. Unlimited is there. Didn't get jumped on, though. I was expecting Diamond to maybe pounce on that one. Guardian Angel now picked up by him. Nick himself, he's got a Zonya's Hourglass, which is vital because, of course, he's been caught out so many times by that shockwave. Kubon working down this turret. I think Yubon might be able to save it. Uh, I think he should be able to clear this wave <laughs> Not out. Not exactly yeah. killing it fast. No, exactly. It's, uh, he can only slowly scratch it with his bark. But uh, this bottom wave, that's the focus. That's where Gambit want to push in. Baron up in 40 seconds time. So it's going to be a cautious attack, I feel, on this yeah. turret. There's no flash on Genja, so Gambit can actually move up to the tower, at least it would be very risky because of the potential engage from Copeland Wolves. So just gonna stay here and hope Kuban can actually do anything up in his one-on-one -on -one with Yombok. Gamma can just wait for Baron. They need Flash ready for Genja. They need a Guardian Angel. And they need a Baron buff. Then they can go win. So Gambit. What will they do? Yombok actually pushed out by the way quite far against Kuban in that top wave. Hasn't gone too aggressive though. This is the focus. Diamond takes. I think he got caught with a dark bind in there. Yes, he did. Broken Shard jumps in. It's Eddie the focus. Nick turns back around. Didn't blow anyone up. Has held the trigger on that ultimate. Stun doesn't land either. Soren was the focus target. Broken Shard was taken low. Yep. Yeah. Got to be careful here. Remember, with the Baron now up, if they were to lose a big point here, the oh, Wolf can nice easily up. jump in. Soren, though, he gets dropped. Nick managed to pull that ultimate. Diamond's going to get blown away into safety by Walleye. Pounces back in. He's not done yet. He wants to finish it. Nick using the Zonia's Hourglass. Soul Shackle's not going to work out from Unlimited. He does not land his Super Minions now. That's where they focus. They turn to the mid lane. Gamut keep on pushing. They're going to get themselves another inhibitor to it down. And they could take the inhib. I'm not too sure where the Wolves want to get close enough. And the first engage from Copernic Wolves was on to Eddie. The support. I'm not sure why they used the Jarman on him. He might go down here. Broken Shard has to get away. Walleye going to be the focus. Diamond pounces, but he gets away. Teleport comes in. Kubon Yumbo comes around behind. the side there. Youngbo can clean up it. Gets one, gets two. Can he get on towards it? Guardian Angel's going to come back up, and Youngbo's into all sorts of trouble. Kenja will not get away, and he's going to be safe. Kenja just cleaning up. 6-1-9. Yeah. So much damage on him now. Stop jumping the support. It's not going to do anything to kill the support. Gamma, they keep fighting. Oh, well, I took down midair this time around by Kenja. 7-1-9. Gamma in full control as they move on through Kubon. Waits for the minions. And Gamma just two towers away. And a Nexus to take the victory here. Kubon caught out. Calling the Cataclysm by Broken Shard. Nick turns around. Oh. Also used on Unlimited. Not going to be the focus target. They still don't go pushing in with the minions. They have to back away. In this back away and I go back, heal up, and then, oh, Broken Shard not done yet? Oh, Stun oh, doesn't land. He now he is. Bounce away. Now he is. Okay, Gamma can go back to base, heal up, wait for Eddie, go straight to Baron. They have super minions already going towards Cobalt Wolves. They won't be able to go out and actually fight for this Baron buff unless it's going to be the last chance now for Cobalt Wolves. Otherwise, Gamma can take it, push into the base, and look to finish here. But again, before, Cobalt Wolves jumping Eddie twice. Genji standing right next to him. It's like, nah, don't need him. Don't need Only him. want Eddie. Just yeah. pure re revenge here. This little squishy AD carry is not the focus, not the one I'm looking for. Now, with their Guardian Angels, will be a big problem next fight. So, minion waves, super minions, shoving down the bottom lane. Youngbook's off the side dealing with that. Hasn't got teleport, had to use it just a moment ago with his Baron spawn. That could be a bit of an issue. Baron started off, actually. Diamond didn't want that. Kubon goes in, they will start it off. So, Youngbook, he's got to make tracks. He's a long way from this one. That explosive cast could be vital in this Baron fight. He's having to defend the turret. Hey, this is going to be the Baron for Gambit. And then I go up to this top lane here. Just take the wave, push it up with him, and wait for all the super minions to pour into the base of Gambit. Like the base of covering Wolves. Every single objective taken. Six out of six dragons, two out of two barons. They are seven three up in turrets. It's given this gigantic gold advantage and from the very beginning Gambit put the marker down. Three and a half minute Dragon, they knew what they wanted with that lane swap which the Copenhagen Wolves initiated has not worked out for them. Another turret falls, that's the eighth. The ninth is ready and waiting to fall. All eleven of them will be taken in this matchup. 
Oh, not sure that's the engage they're looking for. It will. Diamond very, very low. Ooh. Has to use his ultimate. Doesn't obviously give him any mitigation anymore, so I'm not sure why he triggered it. Just simply wants to get himself away from that one. We'll have a bit of regen. Goes in towards the uh, jungle, actually, to get the life steal on that one. So he will be okay for now. Gambit staying in his top lane. Look at the super minions coming towards the base of Copenhagen Wolves here. They have to send someone in to defend. Opens up now for Gambit to go in towards the tower. Unlimited took a lot of damage and Diamond already back to full HP. Yes. Void spikes and of course the uh, Baron buff giving him all of that life steal as he clears out the jungle. Goes back in. Super minions on towards the Nexus turrets right now. Gambit just delaying this one. Then Nexus turrets will fall. You can see Youngbooks had to go back to deal with them. While Gambit, there's one Nexus turret down. He can't keep them away from this. They're trying to do all they can. The inhibitor turrets now falling. Gen just getting another range. Couple of shots on towards it. Every time stepping away, that shockwave could be the big key item. But he's just not able to pull the trigger. They've got to deal with the super minions. Once again, they go around the side. Nexus turrets keep feeling the pressure as Gambit. Just delay and delay on this one. The Wolves, once again, Kenja goes in, gets himself another free shot. Soren taking yet more damage, has to pull a defensive ball. And immediately, the second it happens, Kenja goes in, gets a couple more shots. Inhibitor has finally spawned. That's the bottom wave, but that's going to get cleared out. There's the Inhibitor turret going down. Gambit continuing to keep the pressure on as they just force the Wolves. The Wolves have wall. to engage. They have to do something or they're just simply going to lose this game. Passive that's not the way they want to go out, surely. Woolite takes the focus. Now they're going to try and push out. You can see Gambit just rallying, getting ready. Genja's going to be the focus quickly, pouring away. That's the ultimate use. Explosive cast went down on that one. They flash death sentence on Broken Shard. Will he get followed through? Inhibitor respawns. Diamond pounces. Woolite gets away just about with the heal. That's going to be Inhibitor going down. Gambit continue to pressure onto the oh, government. Hey, the Wolves! Ultimate went onto Unlimited. Not really the ideal focus, but it doesn't matter. It forces them back to the fountain. Death Sentence once again thrown out from Eddie. Another inhibitor falls. And Gambit doing everything they can now. Broken Shard. He's getting focused on. Genji needs to start getting a couple of those auto taxes. Walla is going to focus on. Walla has to jump away. Youngbook in trouble. Gonna gonna kill. Follow through. Walla Youngbook is going to get focused down. Broken Shard gets locked up. Gambit are going to take this one, ladies and gentlemen. They will secure seventh place. They will get the choice of their opponent in the promotion series. And the Copenhagen Wolves, sadly, will be eighth place for them as Genja just cleans up at the end here on towards the fountain. The Nexus will fall. Double teleport from Kubon. And Gambit Gaming, they follow and finish in style. Very well played and really showed how good Gambit looked in this Super Week. Just a standard game for them, to be honest. If you look at the last four games they have played, full control of Dragon. And I have to say, MVP, I know Kendra picked up a lot of kills, but MVP is the man in front. Definitely Edward here for me. The lanterns were perfect to save Kendra. He set up so many kills early game, which gave Dragons, which gave the goal lead for Gambit. He just set up everything. Excuse me while I take yeah, a breather. You uh, talk like two minutes. minutes. <laughs> 8-1-10 Genja at the end of that one. Fantastic. Where's this Genja been, ladies and gentlemen? Cogmore, the champion of choice for Where's him the support suddenly. Being? Where has Eddie been? Big boss Eddie throwing out death sentences like he meant it. And when they landed, by God, did that champion go down. So fantastic play overall from all of Gamit this time around. You know, Kubon solid in the top lane. Yeah. He really has stepped up, proved, you know, of course, he had the experience from Meet Your Makers previously in the LCS, but really is a solid champion in the top lane. More importantly, he gives Diamond the choice to actually choose where he's going to go instead of having exactly, face in the yeah. lane. And we did see Gambit just give the Gragas over to Copenhagen Wolves. We don't actually need it. We can just play Maokai top lane. Yes, he fell behind early, but once he got his tanky items, it was all they needed because the rest of the team all the focus on bottom lane once again pays off. It's where they get the kills, it's what it gives the dragons, and Gambit with the new playstyle, a lot of focus on poking, and once they get the, the lead, they put up so many wards, Copenhagen Wolves could never really move anywhere. Gambit would know. Catch him once again from Eddie, and another kill, another objective, and very, very strong performance. They're not done yet. They still have to requalify, but at least now they Pleasure to talking to Nick. Congratulations once again. You guys were very confident going into this matchup, yet a very calm and collected objective game. Talk us through strategy. Yeah, so generally Copenhagen Wolves forced the swap, which obviously forced the slow game, because if you swap, you actually lose Drake control for the first Drake, which we abused. We got the first Drake, at, I think, at the second minute. Yeah. 
And pretty much that's it. We just forced the Drake fights, which were in favor of us mostly. And just a few times also, we were waiting for the catch-up. We have Syndra, we have Thresh, and generally either I or Edward was landing the hooks or stuns, and we killed people. Talk us through your pick for Syndra here versus Sorens Oriana, a champion he loves so, so much, and other teams actually have banned out versus him a lot. Um, Oriana is a very safe matchup, uh, obviously, and it's also Soren most played, so he's obviously quite good on her. They banned Ziggs, which is like my, the safest, my safest champion, so I had to go for something more aggressive, and they also swapped, so I couldn't have for the early game help of the diamond. Yeah, so it went for farming in the middle and transitioned into catching the people. So fantastic game from you guys. And once again, fantastic record here in Super Week securing that seven play spot. When I talked to the other guys, they were actually looking ahead to next year already um, and not even thinking about the struggle of re-qualifying maybe. How do you look up on the promotion games? Before this week or even before the last week, it was a bit hard for us because we couldn't quite find the connection and everything. But right now we stayed in Cologne for like uh, before, before a week right now and the last week. We trained really hard. Obviously, it came with quite good effects. So we are just trying to do the same for relegations and secure our spot. Oh, you guys look fantastic. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, it's time to wrap up Super Week. So let's go over one more time to the dynamic duo of D-Man and the Fischer.